Hey everyone, this is Amy Smythe-Harris with co-broker owner of Urban Provision Rail Tours. So today I want to just talk about um, the squirrel effect in real estate and creating your business plan. So I named the topic Stop Squirreling Around and Up Your Goals, and kind of an acronym for Urban Provision Realtors, but is really applicable for being in the business, no matter how new you are to the business or how many years you have in there. I have 20 something years uh, in the real estate business and so um, I find that I do this as well. I have I call it the squirrel effect is I get distracted by shiny objects, anything new that may hit my text. So and sometimes we don't focus on the goals at hand to get us to the next spot. So wishful thinking uh, for successful agents out there, they develop business plans that have a clear understanding of how they complete, you know, and, and their goals as well as how they compete in the market and how that will impact their future growth. Reality is most of us in real estate are just putting out fires. We're just happy for a commission maybe once a month or whatever it may be. Some of you have very defined goals because you may, may need to support a household, whatever it may be. But is your goals challenging enough for you? Are they realistic enough for you? Are they attainable? And are you a goal-driven person? Some people aren't that type of client, you know, person that they don't need necessarily hardcore goals or vision boards to succeed. They just have a clear-cut focus, but it may not be as goal-driven as what we're going to show you today. So I'm kind of going old school on this. So, you know, bear with me. I'm going back to what I call the basics on this of getting your business plan in, in place as well as developing certain things. So remember you have to have SMART goals. So they, they must be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. And I kind of relate the goal setting to maybe something else you may be doing in your life that may give you a good correlation. So if you're trying to lose weight, um, are you trying to lose 20 pounds? Okay, well, I'm trying to lose 20 pounds is the end goal. But now how can I have specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely goals to, re to achieve that? It's the same thing in real estate, hitting your goals. So the biggest thing for us in real estate is how much can you expect to earn? How much should you budget for marketing? How many sales will it take to cover annual expenses? How many leads must you have to convert to make the desired incomes? And how many homes will I have to list to sell my desired income? So it's really, really important that the wishful thinking part that we talked about earlier is develop a business plan. And remember, those are long-term goals, but don't forget having short-term goals that are measurable to get to the long-term goals. So one quick thing that I've done is I was that wishful thinking genie in the bottle. Everything's just happens. And um, for me and a lot of real estate agents are like that. So for me last year, I guess maybe two years ago I started it, is I would have a to-do list a mile long. Well, that's great. But then at the end of the day, if I didn't get that to-do list done or even half of it scratched off, I would feel bad about myself and feel like I was a failure and then didn't want to work to the other goals. So what I started, and this has helped me for my goal setting, as well as maintaining day-to-day -day activities, as well as the small projects, daily projects to meet my end goal, is doing this. So, and again, this worked for me, but it took me a lot of time to get to that and feel comfortable with it. And so I'm just passing it on to you is, Instead of that long, mile-long to-do list, I do five things that I need to accomplish that day. So that may be work 123 Oak Street file. Now before I would have all the things I need to do spelled out on my to-do list for Oak Street file. Instead now, I just say work Oak Street file. I set a timer for myself and work all the things I need to do for that one file. Now that may be sending out emails, contacting somebody, texting somebody, whatever it may be. But I don't look at my phone, I don't have that squirrel, I don't go look at emails, um, other emails, I only focus on that file at hand. That way, then I do a follow-up the very next day, 
follow up on 123 Oak Street. So then I can check. So that way I'm not um, overloading myself with all these minuscule tasks, but I focus at one file at a time. Same thing with, let's say you um, want to get so many listings, you know. Okay, so one of your maybe five things is to do is contact five of your past clients for listing referrals. So again, not to contact 20,000 people in your database, let's say, but make it very achievable and measurable for you. And again, that is what's working for me better because I know we put out fires in real estate. I get it, but that seems to work better for me. So that way I'm focusing on what I need to focus on. The fire putting out, I again put a certain time to deal with fires that I need to put out on files. Again, you can't always achieve that, but normally per file within that allotted hour time, I have given myself time to put out those fires. Again, find what works best for you. So the biggest thing is coming up with a marketing strategy, whatever it may be. Doesn't matter to me, but if you have a marketing strategy in place and then you kind of okay, I'm going to focus on luxury um, waterfront properties, or maybe I really like working with first-time home buyers, and that's your niche. So one year I did is I looked at all the money I spent outgoing for advertising, looked at where my client base was coming from, and then when I set my goals for the next year, I really spent my time and effort and money on where my client base was coming from from the previous years. So that kind of helped me define my own niche. So again, remember it's important to assess your proposed niche, make sure it is consistent with the market in your area. You know, so if you like those first time home buyers that I talked about, do some research on them. Look at relevant stats and figures. What's the roadblocks that you have to come working with first time home buyers? Uh, what's the average price point in your area for first time home buyers? How many of those first-time home buyers will qualify um, for closings? And once you find that niche, and that will help you. All right, so let's go back on finding that niche. Let's say you do want that luxury waterfront niche market. So you need to assess is what's the average days on market? What's the average uh, escrow time frame? What is um, the cost outlay of cost to advertise that property versus maybe a different price point of property? So, you know, use this area of your real estate business plan to iron out the details of your market and how your target customers are already being served within your market. So try not to find a niche, obviously, that maybe somebody else has, has got a strong foothold in that area. And, and if you do want to, think about how long it's going to take to get up and running in the niche, that niche and how much money or time spent to get up and running in that niche uh, versus maybe a competitor already established. So things to think about for you guys. So who is that target client? Um, what are their defining characteristics? Let's say you do like those first time home buyers. What do they need out of you? You know, how will you find that target client? So these go all into business planning. And again, this is more goal setting and just setting um, the goals of how much kind of money you want to make. But this, unfortunately, overall, this all ties in together. So you have to think about these when you're setting your final monetary goals. You know, what service is your client uh, target client sinking? Do they need more hand-holding? Do they don't want you to talk to them? Do they want tons of advertising on print and social media? What works for you? And then how are you going to attract and nurture and service that target client? Um, I, the really super high end is in my area is not a target market that um, I want to go after. I am drawn to clients between the three hundred and eight hundred thousand dollar price point. I seem to work better with the type A's engineers. So I had that has chosen kind of evolved into my target market. So I have that affinity for them and I know what kind of service that they need because I've learned what they need. Now, real quick on this, one of the things I did years ago is I was overextending myself with clients, giving them all these pieces of me. And then I realized they didn't really care about all of that. And so 
and I was just frustrated. I felt like that one arm paper hanger all the time and or chasing my, you know, my tail. So I started asking the clients what their expectations of me were. So by doing that, it also allowed me to tailor my service to that client as well as when I did that, it changed my average dollar per client time I spent and that helped me with my goal setting as well. So, you know, analyze those. What's your strengths? What's your weaknesses? Um, you know, it, everybody's different out there. Um, identify, you know, three main strengths that you have. That's just, you know, I'm going to go back on the slide because I think it's a really good slide is we all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. Some of you are new to the real estate business and feel like you don't have any strengths to bring to the table. And I'm going to tell you, you are wrong. You have got so many strengths because your previous profession, whether you were a homemaker or any other profession, you had strengths that you brought to that skill set that you can bring to real estate. But be mindful of your weaknesses. Um, if you don't like doing paperwork, maybe you're better at going out and getting leads, but you don't know how to convert them. I analyze that and then find people or um, tools that can help you with your weaknesses and find what you can do without spending a lot of money. There's a lot out there. Again, this is not a course on identifying that because this is kind of an overview and then we can break it down in another RETI webinar. Um, so I, I know what my weaknesses are um, and uh, I don't know if I want to tell them out to you, but I know what my strengths are. I'm very analytical, um, very blunt with my clients, so that could be a weakness as well, but it, uh, most of my client base do like that I'm blunt, that they, I tell them they're hiring me to market their property, um, not to be their best friend. And so, and once we get that kind of out of the way, they, we know whether we're, we're going to work together or not. So that's also a weakness as well on my part, but by laying it out there, they know. Um, if your weakness is admin, find something that's a transaction coordinator for you. I know that's not my weakness. My weakness is sometimes kind of keeping up with past clients. And so that's when I had the social strategies, social media strategies to keep up with them. So some personal goals for you. Remember, it's limitless in this business. And I think you need to be realistic on this. And I think you also need to understand that as your career changes and your lifestyle changes, your personal goals may change. Um, maybe you want a top producer and then maybe um, life changes and you only want to do one deal a month. That's okay, but just adjust your goals accordingly. You know, determine, and not just like money goals, maybe determine three main goals that you want to master. Whether it's being that go-to agent in your small town or being the most knowledgeable agent in uh, the high-end property market, or having the best online brand, or simply helping families, you know, find a place that feels like home. So find that goal that you want that drives your passion. Again, maybe it's not money, maybe it's something else. Maybe you love working with veterans. Then find your niche and, and then find your marketing strategy based on that, and then you can come up with the monetary goals that coincide with that. So by writing these three down in your business plan will both be motivating and help you later when you're developing your marketing messages. So let's talk about creating a financial plan. So I want to talk with you about creating a financial plan. And so everybody, please understand this is very different in what they need financially out of what they're doing in their real estate career. Um, maybe it's just for extra spending money. Maybe it's to send a kid to college. Maybe it's they have to have it because they're a single parent. Whatever it may be. Um, but you need to understand what works for you. So, you know, having a sound financial plan for your business is essential to me. I mean, let's be real. You're running your own business. A lot of us don't think like that, but we are independent contractors. So you've got to think like that when you're coming up with your financial plan. One other quick Amy tip is make sure that you have a good CPA that can guide you on what um, is good for write-offs, what you should be doing, whether you should be doing um, incorporating your business as subchapter S, partnerships, whatever it may be. 
So to assist you, we've created some spreadsheets you can use to estimate your goals, income expenses, and we'll look at those a little bit later in the webinar. So we'll go through those in just a second. So business expenses versus personal expenses. So you need to understand what is a business expense, what can be written off. Again, a CPA is going to be essential in helping you find that out versus personal expenses. What are my personal expenses and overhead that I need to have um, covered every month? What are my business expenses? So for me, my mindset is I separate the two, but I know what my monthly expenses are combined of what I need to bring in monthly to cover my costs. So then everything over and above that can go into uh, whatever I have deemed fit for that quarter or that um, year or you know that six months of where do I want to stash my money or where do I want to put my money to use because I have maybe over my allotted expenses for the month. Again, that's up to you. So estimating income. And, you know, to do this, you'll need to decide how much money you need to make in your first year. And some of you aren't in your first year. Some of you have never set a goals, financial goals. So I break it down to not just in your first year, just break it down to what do you need to make per month? Because for me, that is easier in my mind. But some of you guys need to look at it for a yearly basis and then divide by 12. One thing I will say about real estate agents out there is um, a lot of us are guilty of it we tend to blow our money before we get it. I understand we all do it, but make sure, and then we have highs and lows. So when you're estimating your monthly income, the rule of thumb is out there is having three months of reserves in your account for your expenses. So think about that and for yourself. And so let's talk about, you know, what you will need to, what you want to make, and then how to research some basic figures for your market, like average sales price for homes, um, and then using the business template to create, help calculate yours. And we're gonna show you this in just a little bit. So, and then, so let's talk about number of transactions to meet your goals. It sounds so simple, totally simple, but maybe it's not. So I always say, look, for those that are seasoned agents, look at what number of transactions you produced last year and when you do that, also look at the average list price for that. And if you haven't produced any listings um, or sales yet because you may be newer to the business, um, think about feasibly how many transactions you are going to need to meet the financial goal and as well as how many transactions that you can physically do without maybe hiring a part-time assistant virtual assistant or, or a transaction coordinator, as well as how many transactions you can physically do to keep the wheel of life in balance for you. So just kind of go through that. So now let's talk about, I'm going to break out of this and I'm going to show you um, what um, kind of an average scenario looks like and then we'll go back to the screenshots. All right, so let's talk about estimating income for you. Again, remember it's an estimate. Um, goals are changeable, you know, they need to be rough, rise throughout the year. So everybody has different things that they need to accomplish. Um, so I'm gonna give you a scenario that this is the listing agent only, and she um, or he wants to make $200,000 a year. Again, that's not unheard of. It's, you know, it could be a, definitely a realistic expectation. But what we I wanna do is talk, how we can get to that. So let's break it down. So uh, we need to figure out how many transactions to meet your goal. But we can't do that without stats. So I'm going to do this and I'm just going to base this on um, some stats of one, um, an agent I know that wants to, you know, reach these goals. That the number of listings that um, they had, and now this was based on 2016 stats, not 2017, obviously. Now you can do an average of your past couple of years, stats, whatever, you know, again, works for you. So what they did is, um, so they had an average number of listings, 16. Out of those, only 14 closed. So that's a really big number. You need to know how many listings you have to take versus how many actually go to a closing table. Um, this particular scenario, the average list price of the listings that they put on the market was 209,000. 
and the average sold price is 199 so you need to know your average list to sale price ratios you need to know your average list price of your listings and now again this is just for listings but you would do the same exact thing if you were working with buyers and then average sold price of the listings so most of you can get these statistics from your MLS um, really easily if not talk with your broker um, or office manager they probably have those stats because I know as an office manager uh, as a broker owner I definitely pay attention to those stats for our agents then you want to look as an agent your average days on market so let's say your average days is 43 days on market and your average escrow time frame is 30 days so you have got 73 days before a listing that you put on the market closes Again, you use the same stats of how many, you know, how long it takes to feed a buyer lead um, on average, of, and that you definitely need to be tracking. And so, again, average days on market for listing, we're going to concentrate on listing right now. And again, most of broker owners or managers will always tell you 50 50 is really a good tool, or 60 40, 60% 60 listings, 40% buyers. Um, that's an old school thought it's still pretty applicable to today so I think it's up to you and your goals of what you're comfortable with so but again you have to know this average days on market because you need to think let's say you take and um, decide on a luxury high-end market and the average days on market is 120 days plus another 30 to 45 days in escrow that you're talking six plus months before a listing will actually close and for you to make money so again budgeting and time frame so let's say your average commission that you take on a listing is 2.75 I'm just saying hypothetical all that so you need to know what your average commission is and then what your office split is now I just did this on a basic like 80 20 split again you can run stats on your own office split whether it is 60 40 70 30 75 25 whatever it may be so I just did this on a a real easy method for most people so now let's do math Ugh, I know I hate math I hate it I hate it I hate it but when it comes to money I love math because I want to know how much money I can make so let's talk about running your statistics so that so again I told you go to your MLS if your MLS it's not easy for you to run talk to your office manager or broker and they'll help you so what we're looking at on this one, again, these are scenarios for you. The average commission on the listings for this agent was, um, the net commission is 61292000 $61, So divided by, so we took the average number of trans, uh, average number of sales times 14, um, and so, excuse me, divided by 14. So we took the average listing and then multiplied it by her average commission rate um, so on average she was getting 4378 uh, on listings now this is before expenses and this is after her office split so that kind of gives you an idea so the volume of sales on a listing so we had um, 2.786 million number of listings that she closed times average sold price and so once we get that we can get the average commission rate of 2.75 so we're going to take the volume of sales on the listing and we're going to multiply that by the average commission rate. So her average gross commission income, what we call GCI, is 76,615. So um, just kind of give you a heads up on that. So she's kind of a bit of ways away from making that $200,000 that she's wanting. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, um, we will be providing a Excel spreadsheet um, and also there's a good website link that I'll send uh, put in the webinar for you guys that's a great way to run stats for yourself and so now we take the split so 76,615 average gross commission times the 80% split so her net income is 61,292 just on commissions again this is before expenses so um, give you an idea so this is kind of how we got up to um, the first number so if you'll see the 61,292 divided by the number of closings that she um, closed of 14 closed her average commission on listings again before expenses is 43.78 so 
again, averages. So you need to think that, take that into account when you're deciding your niche market. Um, what do I want to make? How many transactions that I know I can physically do? Da, 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 da. And how can I lower my expenses? What do I need to do? So let's talk about you got these numbers in mind, but how do you lead generate? Everybody's lead generation is different. So there's tons of courses. RETI has a lot on their website that we have for lead generations. Um, for our agents, we have a lot of ideas. So find what works for you. Maybe it's a lead um, generation website. Maybe it is just working your sphere of influence. Maybe it's running Facebook ads. Um, but know how much you spend per lead for prospecting and how many of those leads actually convert to a sale and um, how much, not just money, but time you are, what I call, cultivating that seed for a lead. Because to me, time is money. So let's talk about budgeting using your average sales price. Again, we've got to go off your average sales price, so whether your average listing sold price or your average sales. And again, I'm just concentrating on one side of the transaction. Uh, but you can do this whole scenario for both sides. I just did it for simplicity. So you've got to know, since we're concentrating on listing size, you've got to know how much it costs you as an agent to put a listing on the market. So again, every market's different. Every requirement's kind of different out of different offices. So I'm just doing some averages here for you. So things that you need to think about, listing expenses, the photo professional photography, marketing, maybe you do mailers or Facebook um, ads or boost post. Maybe you do open house or what's the administrative cost of inputting the listing and checking websites or um, travel cost to put the sign and lockbox on um, to have it on a showing service. So those things you need to know. And you'll know, need to know your averagely excuse me, average hourly rate and time spent. So you need to calculate this because this will help you. Let's say it's $75 per hour. Maybe it's $50 per hour. Maybe it's $125 per hour. You need to know this because it'll also help you make really wise decisions of whether you want to take certain buyers or sellers based on that. Cost of closing gifts. Um, good faith assistance. Maybe you're purchasing a home warranty then or paying for a maid service. Um, and also in those expenses of lead generation like SmartZip, Tiger Leads, Boomtown ROI. So those you need to kind of break down into per listing expense. So, oops, we just got a mess up there, sorry. Um, so let's look at how many number of transactions we're going to have to on the listing side based on these previous stats. So the average um, cost per listing that you've calculated and again this is your own calculations you need to figure those out at, at, on your own but let's say uh, on this per instance this agent says it cost me on average $750 to take a listing that includes all of the expenses I just talked about before so what they need to do is take the 4378 average commission on the listings before expenses minus out that 750 and so per listing on average they would make 3628. So you start kind of breaking this down that's that's not as much as you think. So in order for this agent to make a $200,000 you know prop uh, you know a money for commissions they would need to sell on average 55.1 listings sell and then based on the stats, approximately 60 listings that they would need to take to get to that 55.1. Again, these are based on stats. Um, so what we did is we took the $200,000 um, that you want to make um, divided by 36.28 per listing, and that gave us 55.1 number of listings we needed it to sell. Again, this is just for listings, but kind of gives you an idea. That's a lot of listings to take realistically so again maybe you need to readjust your gut mindset whatever so here's a real quick recap of um, on the screen of how we got to that um, and um, I did it as a little simpler but this one is a really good if you just want to take a picture of the screen whatever that may work for you and so I, let's say this agent says to me Amy I can't do 55.1 transactions for listings. I just physically not able, whatever it may be. So you need to develop an action plan of what you're wanting to do. Maybe it's you're 
your winning strategy is going to be I'm going to up my average sales price. I am going to hire an assistant or I'm going to hire a listing um, coordinator. Whatever it may be, you need to figure that out if you want to make that. Maybe you lower your expenses per transaction. So again, that's all up to you and how you run your own personal business. But make sure you, knowing how many transactions and number of um, the average sold price and number of of transactions you have to do and again I just focused on listing but this would hold applicable for buyer sides as well and so evaluate and revise your plan so as you're kind of seeing all these numbers come together maybe you need to step back um, and maybe your goal was 55.1 transactions but maybe you're halfway through the year and you're only at let's say 17 transactions so stop and reevaluate every maybe three months uh, you know that once a quarter thing for some people is good some people like to do it at the half year mark but constantly stop look at your plans reevaluate them and be realistic about achieving those goals so remember we talked about the very beginning is smart um, so make sure you have those goals kept in mind for yourself so remember your bottom line per listing I um, and know what your averages are per listing. Now, if I'm going to take a higher end listing, that average is 750 that this agent may have probably would increase. So if she started going after a million dollar market, 750 per listing is probably not going to cut it for a million dollar market. Again, know your marketing um, price points. So um, hopefully that gave you guys some ideas of how to um, set your goals, bringing it down into number form, but again, this is a whole overview. Knowing your niche market, branding for your niche market, where to spend money for prospecting um, to get the goals that you want. So again, it's a, it's not just one specific dollar amount that you've got to look at. You've got to look at all of these things when you are um, looking to create your goals to make it efficient and, feas and feasible for you. So hopefully that gave you guys some lots of ideas and uh, thank you for joining us today and I will also be including the um, Excel spreadsheet for you all. Have an awesome day.